Hi, my name is Hemnalini Morsaria Luna, and I'm a modeler with Long Live the Kings and a visiting researcher at the Northwest Fisheries Science Center. I am the lead modeler behind the Atlantis model for Puget Sound, and I'm going to describe to you how phytoplankton dynamics are simulated in the model. So the Atlantis model is built in what we call the Atlantis Ecosystem Modeling Framework, and this is an um, end-to-end or whole-of-system ecosystem model that simulates the whole marine ecosystem, from climate to hydrology, biochemistry, the food web, human activities such as fisheries or human impacts like climate change in a three-dimensional domain. Um, so this is the uh, example for the model for Puget Sound. So we have divided Puget Sound in different spatial boxes, and each of the spatial boxes has step layers, and biological and physical processes in the model are simulated in each of those uh, model polygons in each step layer. Um, the model operates in a 12-hour time step, so it produces projections in time and space of biomass, uh, for example, for phytoplankton, uh, for invertebrates, uh, for vertebrates that are age structured, it uh, produces those projections for each age class. Um, and then we can also look at things like fisheries catch, uh, numbers, um, weight at age of um, the different organisms. And we, we use that information to derive indicators then that we can then explore between different scenarios, for example, management scenarios, or looking at things like ocean warming. The parameterization of the model is described in this technical memorandum. So I'm going to talk to you about how phytoplankton is specifically simulated within the Atlantis model for Puget Sound. We have two functional groups, um, the large phytoplankton, which are diatoms and coccolithophorids, and the small phytoplankton, which are dinoflagellates and phytoflagellates. And this is a, a diagram that shows the different trophic connections within the model uh, and the um, kind of these gray boxes are the primary producers. And within the model, primary producers are governed by this equation where their growth is determined by the biomass, by their spatial distribution, and limited by light, nutrients, and space in the case of benthic, um, phytobenthus, for example. And um, decreased by uh, linear mortality if that's specified in the model, and then grazing. In the Atlantis model, we have to specify um, spatial distribution for all functional groups, and this is the distribution for phytoplankton for both large and small phytoplankton, and this is in milligrams of nitrogen per cubic meter. Uh, the model uses nitrogen as a unit. And to derive those maps, what we did is we used total chlorophyll from the MERS satellite data, which is at 300 meters resolution. And that was data from 2002 to 2012. And we used um, concentrations of chlorophyll derived from, the model, from that uh, satellite data and then applied to the two top depth layers of Atlantis, which are the photic layers, to 0 to 5 meters and 5 to 25 meters. And then abundance of each of the groups was based on biovolume data collected by King County in central Puget Sound. And we use the proportions of the different size classes of phytoplankton in that data to assign um, biomass to our small and large phytoplankton. And we assume that that biovolume was proportional to carbon content, and then from then we convert it to nitrogen. In the near future, um, as part of a new project called the Puget Sound Integrated Modeling Framework, we expect to link the Atlantis model for Puget Sound to the Salish Sea model, which is an ocean biogeochemistry model run by the um, uh, Pacific Northwest National Laboratory and the UW Salish Sea Modeling Center that has a much finer um, resolution and this um, resolution for Puget Sound. So instead of um, uh, estimating phytoplankton biomass changes with the equation and the processes within Atlantis will have, um, will use the projections from phytoplankton from the Salish Sea model to force the food web in Atlantis. Thank you.